Hey guys! So one of the most commonly asked questions we get here at Art Resin is how to make coasters. So we thought we would make a video dedicated to exactly that, how to make a coaster. And we're going to be showing you how to make coasters using some of the more commonly used materials. So we've got cork, we've got a stone tile, we've got a wood slice, we've got a piece of glass that we're going to apply uh, glass mosaic tiles to, and we're going to show you a couple of different ways you can use a silicone mold to make a coaster. Uh, so we've got all our materials here ready to go, so let's get started. Okay, so we're here with Tracy, and she's going to show us how to make a glass mosaic coaster. So Tracy, how are we going to do it? Well, what I found here is this perfect piece of glass that is coaster size. Um, there's two different ways that you can make a coaster. You can use art resin as a grout and it basically glues the shard pieces onto it or you can actually glue down the shard pieces and pour the art resin over top to give it a nice high gloss shiny finish. For this piece, I'm going to use art resin as the grout, taking my shard glasses and creating a nice design and letting it cure overnight. So I have already pre-measured my um, resin and my hardener by volume. Then I'm just gonna mix one into the other, stir for three minutes, and then I'm gonna pour it onto my glass plate. Just doming it, which means I'm not gonna let it go over the sides, just to give it that nice glue for my glass shards. So the first step is to pour one into the other. So we just need a tiny amount, so we're just using these little shot glasses. And Art Resin is nice because it's a one-to-one -one ratio by volume, so you can just eyeball it using these little glasses here. I'm going to stir it for three full minutes just to make sure that the art resin is well mixed. Scraping the sides, scraping the bottom. So do you know why it's important to scrape the bottoms and the sides? Well, if you don't scrape the bottoms and sides when you're mixing, you could end up with unmixed resin and hardener stuck to the sides. And then when you pour it out, you'll end up with sticky spots in your resin. Exactly. So now that my resin and hardener are well mixed, I'm going to pour some onto my glass. So I'm going to pour just a little bit because I don't want it running over the edges. And you can see the resin is so nice and thick that it's just sitting exactly where you're placing it. Yeah, and as I'm spreading it out, it's going to self-level itself out as mm -hmm. well, so you're not going to have any of these bare spots. Yeah, you can see it happening already. Okay. Now you do see from mixing that you created some bubbles, so I'm just going to use the torch to get those bubbles out. Now you have to be careful because the torch is going to thin the resin and you don't want it to still run over the edge. So all you're going to do is just get rid of the bubbles and be done. You can see how efficiently the torch gets rid of those bubbles. It's really, it's the only tool that we use here at the studio, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It works amazing. So now the fun part, we get to put the tiles on. So Tracy, do you have an idea of what uh, design you have? Um, I do, actually. I just picked, I'm going to do just a sun. Some, I'm going to put some sunshine on my coaster. So I just picked some yellows and some oranges, and I'm just gonna do a very, very simple design. Perfect. Okay, so let's get started. So because we're not bringing the resin right over the sides, there's no need to prop it up, right? On a stand, normally if you were gonna let the resin drip over the sides, we'd prop it up on something. Absolutely, right? and that's the reason why, otherwise you're gonna have your piece right stuck to your table. Yeah. Okay. And Art Resin has an approximate 45 minute work time. So you have lots of time to just move around your pieces. If you don't like where it's going, you can just move it around to somewhere else. So we're using a piece of mirror, um, but you could use this uh, same process equally well on a piece of metal or on just a piece of glass, right? Absolutely, same thing, same yeah. process. So you don't have to use glass shards, right? You could use um, rocks or you could use like beer caps or anything that you want to put into the resin. Absolutely, you can use resin. anything that you have just even laying around. Okay, that's it. It looks perfect. So what's next, Tracy? I'm going to cover it to protect it from dust while it's curing, just to make sure there's no dust that falls into the piece. Tomorrow it will be cured hard to the touch, and in 72 hours it's going to be a full cure. Perfect, that's awesome. Thanks, Tracy. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Joanne. So I've got Tracy's uh, mosaic tile coaster here. Now Tracy must have been so inspired by her sunshine design that she took off and went to Maui this week. So <laughs> I'm revealing her coaster. It looks amazing. She did a fantastic job. And a lot of people wonder, because it is tile and it does have a texture, can you use it as a coaster? Sure can. 
So here's a quick tip about warming your resin in a water bath. Now, if you've watched any of our videos before, you know that we recommend giving your resin a water bath. If, for example, the temperature is cold outside or your resin is cold, cold resin may have a thicker consistency. It may have micro bubbles. So if that's the case, then a water bath can help to bring it up to temperature and restore that beautiful art resin consistency. Now, one of the added advantages of warming up your resin is that it greatly reduces the number of bubbles in your resin. So that can be a huge advantage when you're pouring into a silicone mold. Now, you know that we always recommend pouring layers of 1 8 of an inch, and if you pour any thicker than that, the bubbles don't have a chance to rise to the top to get torched out. So if you're pouring a thicker layer of warmed resin into your silicone mold, you'll see that you'll have far less bubbles to start with. So next time you're pouring into a silicone mold, try warming your resin first and see if you can notice the difference. Okay, so we're here with Tara, and Tara's gonna show us how to embed objects in silicone molds uh, to make coasters. So we've got some rocks here, we've got some pebbles, and we're gonna show you a couple of different techniques. So should we get started? We should. Awesome. All right, so we have equal parts of resin and hardener. <laughs> Um, and I think we warmed it up before in a warm water bath to try and minimize some of those bubbles. And then we're gonna go ahead and mix them together. Perfect. And we're going to take our mixing stick and go ahead and mix it. And we're gonna mix slowly. For three minutes, yeah. And it's important to mix slowly because the faster you mix the resin, the more air you're gonna incorporate, which means more bubbles. So especially when you're pouring into a mold, you definitely don't want bubbles. So we want to make sure that the bottom and the sides are scraped properly so every little bit of resin and hardener gets mixed in so it cures properly. All right, I think that is all mixed together. Awesome, so now we're ready to pour. So I'm just gonna give you some gloves. So we're gonna make three coasters today. And we're gonna pour a little bit in each one. Yeah. Now we are pouring, again, thicker than our usual eighth of an inch, but because we've warmed the resin up, that allows us to pour thicker than the usual eighth of an inch. So what are we going to start with first? Uh, I think we'll start with the more natural looking rocks. Awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and take a handful. These are so pretty. They're like those river pebbles, right? Yes, you definitely. Can, you can get them at any um, craft store. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go ahead and drop them in slowly one at a time, maybe. Yeah, so pretty. And there's not really any like right or wrong to how you place them. Just keep in mind though, they are sinking to the bottom because they're rocks and they're heavy. But in fact, when this is cured and we pop it out, the bottom is gonna be the top, right? So just keep that in mind. That looks great. Mm. Okay, and what's next? Uh, next we'll go with the, um, the purple rocks. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. Like little, little pebbles, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And we are using stones and pebbles, but you can use like a variety of objects, right? Mm -hmm. You can Absolutely. use anything you've got. Beads or um, beer caps. A lot of people use beer caps. Whatever you think. I'm going to take some turquoise. So it's going to take about 24 hours for these to cure. And uh, you can pop them out in the mold as soon as they're dry to the touch. The earlier you pop them out, the easier it is to release them. There we go. I think that looks good. Awesome. So now for the third one, we just want to show you a little bit of a different technique when you're embedding. Um, as I just said, some items are really heavy and they can sink down to the bottom or the top. Um, so what you can do if you want to get a really thick coat is you can pour in layers. What you do is you pour your first layer and then you let it sit for three hours, three to five hours. It's going to start to thicken up. And once it's thick, you can then go ahead and add your next um, layer of rocks or stones or whatever you're embedding, uh, and then pour your next layer of resin on. And because of the thickened resin will be sticky at that point, then the two layers are gonna bond together. So there's no need to sand or anything like that. So that's a really handy tip if you wanna get a thick coat to pour in layers. Mm -hmm. Perfect, okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take some of the turquoise on and put mm -hmm. them in the bottom. I think that's right. good. Awesome. So then we're going to wait um, about three hours or so. We're going to come back, add some more rocks, pour another resin layer. Sounds good. And we'll be able to see the difference tomorrow. So Great. we'll come back in a few hours. Yes. Okay, so it's been three hours. Our resin has thickened up and we're ready for our second layer. Perfect. So we're going to take some purple rocks this time and just sprinkle a few of them right there around just so we can see the difference. Awesome. I think that looks great. Yeah, perfect. And we've got our resin already mixed up and ready to go. Yes. So we'll just we pour do. our 
next layer on. And really, it doesn't matter. You can put the resin first and then the stones, or as we did the stones first and then the resin. It doesn't really matter. That's good. So we'll just wait 24 hours and we'll show you what they look like tomorrow. Thanks, Tara. Thank you, Joanne. So it's been 24 hours and Tara and I are here to reveal our coasters. All right, let's take start? a look. Yes. All right, let's start with the rocks. Oh, look at that. Awesome. Oh, I love it. Oh, me too. That's fantastic. It looks so good. Mm -hmm. So you can see, even though the rocks did sink to the bottom, they're big enough, right? That there's mm -hmm. not too much empty space up here at the top. It looks really good. Yeah, it does. Very nice. All right. Let's take a look at the next one. Awesome. So next we have our little pebbles. And if you remember, we only did one layer of these pebbles. Yeah, it looks great too. Mm -hmm. looks fantastic. But you can see the pebbles sunk down to the bottom. So there's quite a gap uh, there. Mm -hmm. And then for our last one, we uh, did two layers to avoid the, having that gap, right? So yeah. let's compare and see how that looks. Look at that. Yeah. Awesome. It looks a lot fuller compared to this one, which has that kind of empty space at the top here. Mm -hmm. So two different options um, to do coasters, either doing it in layers or doing it in one shot like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Thanks yeah. so much, Tara. Thanks, Jim. So just a quick side note, when you're working with silicone molds and resin, one of the reasons why silicone molds work so perfectly with resin is the resin doesn't stick to silicone. So usually when you're unmolding, they'll just pop right out of the mold. But sometimes as the mold um, is getting older and getting used more often, it starts to break down. So there are a few suggestions um, to make unmolding a little bit easier and prevent the resin from sticking. One is to pop the uh, mold in the freezer after the 24 hour mark and let it get really cold and that can help release um, the resin. Another one is the opposite, to put it in a hot water bath and that kind of softens the resin up and makes it a little easier um, and releases it from the side of the mold. Sometimes the molds just eventually will break down and need to be replaced. So just something to be aware of when you're working with silicone molds and resin. So I'm here with Jasmine and we're going to show you how to make coasters using silicone molds and alcohol ink. So uh, silicone molds, you can get them in so many different shapes and sizes, but the thing to remember is it's best to look for a mold that has a glossy interior. Uh, a glossy interior is going to give you a glossy finish on your resin. Now, if you have a mold that you love and it's got a matte finish on the inside, don't worry. We're going to show you a little trick to get that matte finish back up to the art resin glossy finish we all know and love. Okay, Jasmine, let's get started. Okay, so you're going to take your equal parts resin and hardener, as always, and mix them together. So for this project, we're gonna pour the resin a little bit thicker. So we wanna make sure that we're stirring it nice and smoothly so we're not folding a lot of air into it and so we don't get as many bubbles. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna put a nice bit into each mold. Right, so normally we tell you don't pour thicker than an eighth of an inch when pouring resin because bubbles will get trapped in the resin and won't have a chance to rise up to the surface. Now we're gonna kind of bend the rules a little bit pouring into a mold. And this is when using warmed resin really, really comes in handy. A warm water bath will thin out the resin. There'll be way less bubbles and that actually enables you to pour a thicker layer. Right? That's right. And now for the fun part, we're gonna put in our alcohol ink. So Jasmine, do you have a certain color scheme in mind or a plan? Yeah, well you can really be creative in this part, but I think I'm gonna be using some blue, some green, and some white for this one. All right, and we can get started. I'm gonna start with white. You wanna make sure that you pick an opaque color like white for your Petri dishes so that the design really shows up when you flip it over. Perfect. So you can be really creative here, right? With Absolutely. You can put in a lot or a little. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put in a little bit so that we can really see how the resin acts with the ink. Perfect. So we're using alcohol ink. Do you think you could get the same effect using a different kind of ink, like acrylic ink? or? No, I don't think you get the same effect with that because the alcohol in this kind of ink actually denatures the resin as it goes down. So that's how you get the cool effects. From oh, it. right. You get those cool like tentacles. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It, yeah. That wouldn't happen with acrylic ink. Okay. Perfect. All right, I'm looking at this and I think it could really use a little bit of yellow and you know, that's half the fun about this is really getting to like experiment as mm -hmm. you go along. Absolutely. This one has a lot of negative space, but I find that's really nice for really seeing the patterns. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, it looks good. It's so magical watching the, the ink as it, really it descends is. into the resin, right? It I makes know. the coolest patterns. And you never know what it's gonna do. Yeah, 
All right, I think that looks pretty good, so I'm gonna call this one finished. Yeah, it looks awesome. So let's move on to the next one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, here, I'm gonna take some purple and some pink for this one, and we're gonna do something a little bit different, and I have this old white bottle, which just has a little bit of white ink in the bottom. So I'm gonna open it up, and we're gonna actually mix the inks together before we put them in. Ah, this that's a great idea. Yeah, and I think I'm just gonna use maybe a drop or two. If you don't have an old white bottle, of course, you can really put it in anything that you think you can squeeze the ink out of later. Put the cap back on and shake it up. And then we'll really have a nice light pink. Okay, so we can start with this. Now that we've mixed this white into the pink, it actually mm -hmm. becomes an opaque color, so we can use right. it as our base. Awesome. That's such a good point, Jasmine. You can like totally mix your own cu custom colors, right? Yeah, it yeah. makes it really fun. It makes it your own, right? Yeah. The white seems to like drive the ink down, doesn't it? Creating yeah, those kind of little like. those feelers, right? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, now I'm just gonna add some of our regular pink. And, you know, just like the other one, put it wherever your heart wants mm -hmm. to put it. Yeah, there's like no right or wrong in this, is there? Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. It's all about, you know, experimenting mm -hmm. with these. And you never really know what it's gonna look like when you turn it over the next day. And I think this one deserves some gold. Yes, pink and gold. It's like a really nice favorite. combo. And so you said the gold is also an opaque, right? Yeah, so yeah. this is also an opaque, so you will see it kind of like shoot down with all the other colors. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna look great. All right, so this one has a little bit less negative space, but I still think we're gonna look fabulous. Yeah, it looks awesome. Okay, so let's move on to coaster number three. Absolutely. So for this one, I'm gonna show you how you can kind of move the resin around with the stir stick and kind of put in some movement if you'd like. Oh, cool, so it's kind of like a marbling kind of idea. Yeah, a bit, yeah. yeah. And then I think I'm just gonna do some yellow and some orange and pink. Let's see how it turns out. It's so cool, I can see the ink dropping on the yeah. first one that we did already. No, it's pretty yeah, amazing. So it's really neat. There's just a lot of movement in these pieces, which mm -hmm. is what I really like about them. Yes, yeah. If you're the kind of artist who likes a lot of control, then I think this is a good exercise. You don't really have a lot of control, do you, with this? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's really an interesting aspect to it. All right, so we got some color floating in there, not too much. And then I'm just gonna take the end of my stir stick here. Mm -hmm. You can really just gently pull it around so that you so kind of get cool. like mixing. Really drag it around however you like. I love how this looks. And you can poke some down if you like. If yeah. You you know, use a little bit of pressure and then it'll go in, or you can just drag it around on top. Super cool. It's really nice for, you know, really mixing the colors together. Yeah. So we often get asked here at Art Resin when you can demold your resin from the silicone mold. So Art Resin is dry to the touch at the 24 hour mark. Uh, you can certainly remove it before the 24 hour mark. Um, as soon as it's dry to the touch, it depends on how warm your room is, it might dry a little faster. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely remove it before the 24 hour mark, before the resin's fully cured, while well, it's still pretty flexible, and yeah. it'll be a lot easier to unmold. Yeah, I find I don't rip as many molds that yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's a point too. Silicone molds, they will all eventually break down. Mm -hmm. So you wanna get a good quality mold, it'll last longer, but they all will eventually break down and mm -hmm. need replacing. Do you wanna try the next one? I was hoping you'd ask. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I got a pair of gloves here. So I think I'm going to do pink and gold and white. Ooh, that would be pretty. And I'm gonna try and do a pattern, I think. So this uh, square mold actually has a matte interior, which is gonna give a matte finish um, to the resin. But when we demold it, I'm gonna show you how you can fix it and bring the gloss back. Okay, so we're all done now. We've got four very different looks here, so we'll see how they look tomorrow. Yeah. Now, normally at this stage, when you're done working with resin, the next step would be to torch it, but we're not gonna do that with alcohol ink, right? Yeah, alcohol is super flammable, so if you try and torch this, you'll light your thing on fire, which is really unsafe. <laughs> it's not good. So. <laughs> Another great reason for using the warmed resin, it reduces the bubbles right from the get-go. So actually torching kind of isn't even necessary. I don't really even see any bubbles in there. No, so look pretty clear to me. Yeah. yeah, awesome. So we'll see how they look tomorrow. Thanks, Jasmine. Yeah, thanks. So we're back for the big reveal. 
Jasmine, you want to yeah, absolutely. unmold these guys? So they've been sitting in the molds for less than 24 hours. Oh, oh that's so that pretty. That turned out really well. Yeah, that looks amazing. This one had a lot of like negative space in it. Yeah, it's so pretty. All that negative space really lets you um, yeah, see the pattern yeah. of the alcohol link. I actually really like this one. Yeah, okay. beautiful. All right, let's see how the next one turned mm -hmm. out. That oh. one looks so cool too. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I love all those variations of pink. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. it mixed up really well. Yeah, nicely done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just really like how this one turned out. Now, this has been less than 24 hours since we poured this yesterday, mm -hmm. right? So you'll notice that it's like still a little bit flexible because it's you know entirely made of resin. It doesn't have some sort of base on it. Right. So. Over time, this will just keep getting harder and harder in the next couple of days. But in that meantime, you want to make sure that you're laying it flat on the table and not kind of on something, because then you might get a little bit of a kink in there. Right. So yeah, you just leave it nice and flat for a couple of days, and you'll have a really nice and hard one. Yeah, like this one here. We yeah. resin last week. It's absolutely rock hard now. You mm -hmm. can't bend it, but it definitely was pliable when I first demolded it. So. Yeah, exactly. Great. Good. So I am going to reveal the next one. Okay. So these two came out of the mold quite easily. This one, if you'll notice, I'll just pop it out. It actually stuck to the mold at the corner here. See? And I think one of the reasons why is that it was filled up quite, quite high, almost to the top. And the edge of it was right on this kind of weak spot, right at the neck or the collar, you know, at the seam here, um, which is a bit weak and it ripped. So, I mean, this can happen even on the best quality molds. Eventually, all silicone molds will break down, as I told you. So, if this does happen, it's unfortunate for the mold. Um, but you can just sand off these little bits of residue here, right? And then yeah. you'll, you'll never know. You can sand it off and then just use a little bit of resin to touch it up to bring the gloss back. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this one looks amazing, too. I love your marbling technique here. It looks so good. Yeah, that turned out really well, actually. Yeah. Beautiful colors here, Jasmine. You did a great job on this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our last one now. So this one, you remember, was in a matte mold. So, ah, that's cool. But you can see it's got a frosted finish on it from the matte, right? It's not as glossy as these ones that were in the mold with glossy interior. Mm -hmm. So I told you when I poured it that I was gonna show you a little trick to bring the gloss back. Okay, so I'm just gonna get my gloves on. So you wanna mix up a very small amount of art resin. And remember, there's no minimum amount required when you're mixing our resin. As long as you stick to the one-to-one -one ratio, you can mix up a minute amount, which is mm -hmm. awesome. So we just got a little um, shot glass here with a tiny amount. You want a disposable foam brush. These work amazingly well. You can use your gloved hand too, but I prefer the brush because it's a little neater. And here's my little stand. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just brush on a really, really thin coat and immediately immediately you can see how the cloudy turns clear. So it is one extra step, but you know what? If you have a favorite mold at home that's matte and you want to use it, this is an excellent way to make it work. That's it, so we'll just let that dry overnight and yeah. it'll be perfect. That's really cool. Look yeah. How much you can see inside of it now. Yeah, exactly. Awesome, well, you did an amazing job, Jasmine. Thank you so much for coming on to show us how to make coasters using silicone molds and alcohol ink. Yeah, they thanks. turned out fantastic. Yeah, it was really fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey guys, a quick side note about taping off the bottom of your piece. Now taping off the bottom of any piece, whether it's a coaster or a piece of artwork, is a really important thing to do. It makes life so much easier because of drips. Uh, as the resin spills over the side, it'll catch on the bottom of your piece. And uh, if you don't have tape, you're gonna have to sand off those drips after they cured, which is a whole lot of extra work. What I like to do is tape off the bottom, and then uh, when the resin is cured, you can rip the tape off and the drips right along with it. So I just wanted to show you a couple little handy uh, tips uh, for taping. So we like to use masking tape when we tape off. This is one by 3M. If you use painter's tape or masking tape, just make sure you get a really good quality one. There are really cheap um, painter's tapes out there, but they don't have very good stick. They can be really porous and absorb the resin. So it really uh, makes a difference to get a good quality painter's tape. So I've got this 3M tape here. Okay, so. Now, for taping off a square, it's really straightforward, obviously. So I just, what I do is line it up along the edge and I let it 
um, extend past the sides. And then I just kind of do a miter cut with my, with my thumb here. I'll just put my thumbnail on the very corner of the edge and then rip the tape on kind of an, an angle here like that. Okay, so, and then I just go around each edge like that. Just overlapping and angling it off. This one here too. You see when you do the second one, it's overlapped and you've got a nice clean edge there. So I'll do this one here. And then I really, I mean, you can use like something to kind of burnish it down. I just like to use my, my fingers here just to make sure I get a really nice bond there between the tape and my piece. Okay, you can even use your thumb just to press it down. And there we go, it's all ready to resin. Okay, so squares obviously are really easy. For circles, for a circular piece like this or in a regular shape piece if you have like a charcuterie board, it can be a little uh, more challenging, but I've got a way that I like to do it and it goes, it goes pretty quickly. So what I do is I have thin little strips. I rip off thin little strips about this size and I just take the straight edge and I line it up along the edge of my piece here, okay? And so I've got a little piece that's, um, that's overlapping. And again, I just use my thumb to hold it down and I just rip. And I'll just go around with these thin little strips. Okay, and I just, just rip off the edges and I just go around overlapping. Okay, it's a little tedious, but this is the easiest way I've found to do it. Okay, so you get the idea. I just keep overlapping and eventually you end up with kind of almost a nautilus sort of pattern like that. Okay, and you can see here, I've got a couple drips that caught uh, on this piece. Now, a handy thing when you are removing the tape is to wait until the resin is dry to the touch. And that can be well before the 24 hour mark. In fact, you can pull it off as early as the 12 hour mark, depending on how warm your, your room is and how quickly the resin has dried. Now, the reason you wanna pull it off early is it because um, if you wait until after the 24 hour mark when that resin has fully cured, it's gonna have really bonded and it's gonna be really hard to pull off. So this one here has been sitting for over a week or so and I was trying to pull it off earlier and I'm gonna have to sand this off. Those, those drips there that the tape has caught, they've really bonded to the resin on the side and the tape is just like ripping without really pulling, without really pulling the drips off the drips are kind of staying on there. So I'm probably gonna end up having to either use a blade to pop them off or sanding it off. And you can see on this one as well, the resin has, um, has run down the sides and really, really cured all the way around the tape. So if I had pulled this off early, it would have just ripped right off, but now the resin has really, really cured and it's gonna to be tough. So always remove your tape as soon as your resin is dry to the touch. And that's it. That's your quick tip on taping and removing your tape from your resin piece. Okay, we're gonna do the rest of our coasters now. And I've got my cork coasters, my stone tiles, and my wood slices. Now the reason I grouped these ones together is because I wanna do a little experiment. These are all natural objects, which means they're more porous than say glass or mirror or metal. Uh, and being more porous means that they can absorb the resin, which could end up making them darker. So an easy way to test for this is by testing first with a little bit of water. Just drop a little bit of water, say on your wood slice, and if it immediately goes dark, you know it's probably gonna absorb the resin and it's probably gonna end up darker as well. So what you can do to lessen the darkening is to seal first. So you can use a spray sealant, like this Krylon spray, or you know, I really prefer actually using a brush on sealant, like white glue or Mod Podge, and you can apply it with a disposable foam brush or even your gloved hands. And the reason I prefer a brush on sealant is because these natural objects have a lot of nooks and crannies um, in the stone and the wood, and you can really use the brush or your gloved hand to work in the sealant into those nooks and crannies. And the most important thing is to choose a sealant that dries clear and is appropriate for the material you're sealing. So earlier today I sealed some of these coasters. I used a brush on sealant for the wood and I left this one unsealed. I used a brush on sealant for the stone tile and I left this one unsealed. And then for the corks, I sealed one of them with spray sealant. I sealed this one here with a brush on sealant and I left this one unsealed. So we're going to compare and see which one works best. Okay, so let's start with the cork. 
So I've got all of my tools here ready to go. I've got my dust cover, I have my torch, I've got a toothpick for getting little bits of dust out, I've got a spreader for doming, and most importantly, I've got my art resin. Equal amounts of resin and hardener, stirred for three minutes, and I scraped the bottoms and the sides as I stirred. Okay, so I'm ready to pour. So first, I'm pouring onto the piece of cork that has the brush on sealant. As I said, I'm not gonna let it run over the sides. I'm just gonna do a little doming technique here with this little spatula. These are so handy. You can use a little plastic takeout knife too. Okay, and there's no special um, skill involved in doming. All you need is a steady hand and just work slowly. Okay, so we're just gonna nudge the resin right up to the edge without letting it go over. Art resin has a beautiful, thick consistency and it lets you just put it exactly where you want it to go and it won't move. And then next I'm gonna pour on the coaster that had the spray sealant. When you do this, you don't have to tape off the bottom. You can if you want for a little extra insurance, but when you get good at doming, you don't have to. And our last one is the coaster that had no sealant on it at all, it's just raw cork. So I'm doming all of these, but as I said, you could tape off the bottom and let it run over the side if you wanted to. I like the idea of doming because it's one less step. <laughs> okay, we'll just give these a quick torch to get rid of any bubbles. Got our artist torch here. Just a really quick pass. It doesn't need much. Okay. And then, of course, we have our toothpick candy. We're gonna look in the light and make sure there's no bubbles that I missed or bits of dust. Oh, actually, there's one little thing there. A bit of dust. There we go, got it. Perfect. So we're just gonna cover these up. In 24 hours, they're gonna be hard to the touch, and we'll see how they look. Okay, so now we've got our stone tiles. Okay, so remember this one I sealed with the brush on sealant. This one has no sealant at all. It's totally raw, so we'll see if it makes a difference with the resin. So I'm pouring on the coaster that has the sealant here. And then I'm just gonna actually let it go over the sides on this one. It's a little bit harder to dome on sort of an uneven surface like this. I've taped off the bottom with painter's tape. Okay, and I'm just actually gonna use my gloved hand just to run the resin along the edges. You can even dip your finger in the resin and then just run it along the edge here. And next, we'll do our coaster that has no sealant on it. This is raw stone. Okay, so when it cures, we'll see if there's any difference in the color. And again, I'm gonna let this one run over the edges. So taping the bottom is really handy. It's gonna catch all the drips. And then the next day, when the resin's dry to the touch, you can just rip the tape off and rip all the drips off along with it. So. Okay, so now I've poured. I'm just gonna use my torch to get rid of any bubbles. Okay, so again, just a light pass with the torch. Okay, and then grab the toothpick and just take a look in the light to make sure there's no bubbles or dust that I've missed. It's looking pretty good. There's one tiny little bubble there. I'm just gonna pop it. There we go. Perfect. So you can already see this coaster is actually going a little bit darker, the one that didn't have any sealant on it. So we'll see how it looks tomorrow after it's dry, after 24 hours. So I'm just gonna cover it now to protect it from dust. And we'll see how it looks tomorrow. Okay, so now we're gonna resin our wood slices. Now, if you remember, this one here had the brush on sealant. This one is raw wood. Okay, so one of the other reasons why I really like applying a sealant, especially with wood, is that wood can be notorious for off-gassing. And what that means is it releases the trapped air because it's an organic material. It releases its trapped air into the resin in the form of bubbles. So sealing just helps to provide a barrier. It creates a barrier to prevent that air from off-gassing. So I always like sealing. All right, there's a lot of different reasons why wood can off-gas, but um, it could be the age of the wood, it could be how dry it is, it could be the type of wood, so sealing is always the best uh, practice. Okay, so now I'm gonna pour, and I'm just gonna dome this one again. Again, if you wanted to do the sides, absolutely no problem, you can just tape off the bottom. Just get a good quality painter's tape. You want a good quality one that has good stick. 
Okay, and if you do want to cover the sides as well, you can use, again, a disposable foam brush, but I just like using my gloved finger. So now I'm going to pour on the piece that has no sealant, the raw wood. You can already see there's a difference here in color. The one with no sealant is immediately going darker. Okay, so let's grab my torch here and give this a quick torching to get rid of those bubbles. Okay, and toothpick, check. That one actually looks good. Oh, there's a little bit of a dust in this one here. Okay, awesome. So we'll cover it up and we'll see how they look tomorrow. So our coasters have cured and I'm ready for the reveal. So we'll start with our wood. If you remember, this one had um, the sealant on it. It kept its color. It's still quite pale. This one here had no sealant. So the resin really absorbed and it actually, I think it looks quite beautiful. The wood grain is just glowing. Um, but you wanna be careful and test first so you know exactly what to expect. Wood is all different. It depends on the type of wood. It depends on how dry it is. Uh, you might not get this kind of glow. This one, for example, here, I sealed it on the front so it kept its nice light color. But you can see on the back, where the resin seeped over, it went really, really dark. So always best to test first so you know exactly what to expect. Uh, same here with our stone uh, coasters, our stone tiles. This one had uh, the sealant, so it kept this nice bright color. And the one with no sealant absorbed and went a little bit darker. So just good to have options. Uh, and now the cork, and this one actually surprised me, the results here. This was the cork coaster that had no sealant. It looks beautiful. This one here was the darkest one of all, and this one had the brush on sealant. So the cork really, really absorbed that brush on sealant and ended up becoming really dark. Um, and the one here that the spray sealant, I actually wasn't even sure if it would work and it totally did. This one is the lightest one of them all. So just an important reminder, always, always best to test first so you know exactly what to expect when you're resining. So that's it. Thanks so much for joining us as we showed you step-by-step step how to resin a coaster. We hope that you feel informed and inspired enough to try making a coaster of your own. And as always, be creative and have fun.